Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of SOS with Sonia Rasula. I am, of course, your host, Sonia Rasula. Today's episode is a great one. I'm really excited for you to meet our guest. Ellie Hazard is the founder of Peach Beast. She's a trained artist who started making screen printed t-shirts right in her living room when her studio closed down. Described as the Lisa Frank for adults, Peach Beast is a bold statement brand that creates clothing and now creates stationery, accessories, jewelry products, and more, all handmade. Her aesthetic and her brand are spot on. However, she really needs to grow her Instagram following past 2,000 followers and wants to know how to work with influencers. So watch as I explain how to find and work with social media influencers. Here's today's episode and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the other SOS episodes. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, your brand, and what it is that you do to everyone, that would be great. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Very excited about this as well. Um, my name is Ellie Hazard. I am a Milwaukee-based uh, multidisciplinary artist, and I have been operating Peach Beast for about three years. Um, it's a small brand of wearables, so I do jewelry, t-shirts, and then accessories as well. Um, so it's definitely been a experiment for the most part. Um, I would say not until last year I started really taking it seriously. Um, it started as something kind of just for fun. And um, I, I mean, I'm tr classically like trained painter. So I actually was doing paintings and doing gallery shows and kind of part of the fine art world. Um, and then I just decided to get into wearables. Um, as a fluke, like I got kicked out of my art studio, <laughs> like the building was sold and my friends and I, we were all devastated. And I was like, well, I mean, this is a bummer, but instead of, you know, being sad about it, I'm just going to find a new way of making that I can do in my house. Um, so funny enough, it started with me screen printing, like in my living room. <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then it's, you know, slowly grown into what it is now. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. You have a very, you have a very specific aesthetic, which I love and it comes across so well. Um, you Thank know, you. we have a lot of guests on the podcast and many of them, the brand and the branding is just like all over the place. You have a very specific brand and you know who you are. And so this, it's so good. Like that's already there, which is great. <laughs> okay. Really? Cause that's always the thing that of course creatives are self-conscious about like, do I make sense? Do people get me, you know? Yes. So it's really helpful to hear that kind of stuff. Yes, of course. Um, I'm really good friends with Tuesday and I feel like, do you know who Tuesday? Yeah, is? Tuesday Bassin, yeah. 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 I mean, th that's the thing. There are young girls and guys all over the country and all over the world who are a little different and consider themselves to be a little bit different and have that sense of like wit and humor and like you have that and you fall into that category. And I think the stuff that you're making is just so fun and weird and um, yeah, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> so that's great because I spent the last two episodes talking to people about aesthetics. <laughs> so I don't have to do that this time, which is oh. great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, and you also are really diverse. Like you've got patches, you've got jewelry, you've got like gifts. So I like that you've diversified your product line too, because mm -hmm. that is something that a lot of people struggle with where they just like kind of make one thing and they just do a lot of the one thing. And you're like, you need to offer different types of products. Cause like what happens if someone doesn't have pierced ears, like they still want to support you and your brand. So I mm -hmm. like that you've got all of that going too. Um, but tell me about your main issue. Cause I know essentially you want to understand how to work with influencers, which I'm really excited to help you on. Um, where is that, where's that coming from? Yeah. So I, up until now, I mean, doing in-person markets has been like my main thing. 
um, last year and then, you know, for the beginning part of this year, I was doing markets at least once a month, if not more than once a month when possible. Um, so, you know, connecting with people in that way is very organic. Like people yeah. can see you, they can see all of your stuff. You're able to present yourself in a very specific way. Um, and it's just really easy to kind of network that way. And I don't know, I've just made so many awesome connections, like way more than I ever thought that I would prior to starting doing markets. Um, so not having that as a resource anymore is definitely kind of like, you know, I feel like I'm missing a limb or something. Um, but I wanted to, you know, I've been wanting to expand like my online presence even before all this happened. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I think there's, you know, endless possibilities with that. And I see a lot of successful brands doing that. Um, so it's something that I've been wanting to do. And now it's kind of the push where like, I have no choice. I have to <laughs> go that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, I've been slowly growing my, um, online presence via Instagram and my website. I have a blog, which is kind of new. I've only done a few posts on it. I haven't done any like email marketing at all or newsletters, mm -hmm. but I've been looking into that. <laughs> I know it's funny because I was thinking about that's the reason why I'm here is because I get your emails <laughs> of, you know what I mean so it's like it does make people interact like yes an email is very effective so I know that that's something that I'm missing I just haven't done it yet okay okay good so you're see you already know what you need to do which is the first step <laughs> so um yeah, it's interesting because right now, because of coronavirus, all of the interactions that people would have been able to have and work at markets and, you know, a lot of people do like weekly flea markets or weekly farmers markets and like none of those are happening. And mm -hmm. so if people didn't have websites, they're all scrambling now <laughs> to get a website up. You already have a website um, and you already have a great Instagram profile too. So it's getting more followers on Instagram. You should have way more, by the way, like your Instagram, your products are great. Your aesthetic is great. I'm going to help you get more followers on Instagram. Um, and then you definitely are so ready to be working with influencers and like, you know, do we hate the word influencer? Yes, but it's the easiest and best word to use. So I'm just going to keep using it. Yep. Yeah. You know, yep. um, <laughs> People with influence, that's the thing. So yeah. I'm going to share the screen now because I want everyone else to see your aesthetic and see what it is that you do. And I think this is so great. So we are on your homepage, peachbeast.com. And it's very easy to see and understand who you are, what you make. It's so colorful. And I love that you put that you're a one woman operation. I think little things like that are so important. You know, mm -hmm. this is what separates you from the kind of big copy off companies that are trying to sell this, this aesthetic and this kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, so I really love that you have that at the bottom there. So props for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, what I don't see, just going to throw that, throw this out there is, so have you been collecting email addresses? Yes. So okay, my integration, I um, use Shopify, so it does make customer profiles. Okay, great. Um, and then I did actually, <laughs> this is embarrassing. I did have a newsletter sign up on my website initially mm -hmm. <laughs> and I took it off because I was like, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, so I do have some emails from when I had that up there. Okay. Okay. So you're starting slow. You're starting small, but that's okay. Everyone starts at zero. <laughs> so yep. you're, you're already, you're, you do have emails because you've had your store and Shopify has been collecting those emails. So you are already ahead of some people, honestly. So I like that you mentioned email, even though this does not have to do with influencers, which I will pivot into in a minute. I think that email marketing is so key for someone like you because even if you only have 100 email addresses at the beginning, maybe you have 400, maybe you've been collecting them at markets in person and you have customers online and you've got like 700, 
whatever it is, you have to start somewhere. And most people are intimidated with like the starting of the thing. Um, But yet all these small business owners put daily time and attention into Instagram. And Mm -hmm. you do need to do that. Instagram is super important um, for brands. But what I have seen time and time again and throughout the last 12 years of Unique Markets is that email marketing works for customer retention and it works for like repeat buying potentially much more than social media, for instance. And and the one big difference here is that when you write an email, it gets into people's inboxes. And when you write a post, Instagram is choosing who sees that post. Right. right? Like it's not in real time, which sucks. And so you're putting out all of this great content and photos and captions and like putting time and energy into doing that. And only probably about 15 to 20% of your audience is actually even seeing it. And so when you look at how low those actual numbers are, it makes so much sense to start those emails. So I would say you should start like a monthly email and you could have like featured products or maybe every month you have like a deal. So every month there's, you choose the product, you have it on special deal. And the rest of the newsletter is whatever you want it to be. It can be a blog post. It can be interesting, fun facts about you and the company. It could be the story of how a certain patch was made. Um, it could be like a Q&A with the team who actually makes the patches. Like there's so much more to your products and your story, even like, even doing an article of like your favorite cafes, like in town. Do you know what I mean? Like it's Mm -hmm. letting people into your world and your world is so very specific and awesome that it's like, it doesn't have to just be about the products. That's what I feel like small business owners get really like anxious about sending emails because they're like, I don't want to bother people. I don't want to annoy people. And I don't know, like, I don't have enough to fill a newsletter, but it's like, no, you absolutely do. You can have your featured product of the month, you know, and then come up with some sort of great content and you're already doing it for your Instagram anyway. Right. So I'd love to see you start doing that. Um, And then let's get into working with influencers because that was your big question. And I think you are the perfect type of artist to really thrive from working with a community, whether it's influencers or a community of even like your own peers, um, which a lot of people don't think about, but you could even be um, capitalizing on your own current community too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you know, if you have any followers that have large followings, do you know? Have you stalked them? I mean, I have... I, I mean, I don't do too much stalking, but (laughs) I do interact with a lot of other like makers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also, you know, people who are like stylists, like uh, makeup artists or like hairstylists, um, and people who are kind of into like the fashion realm. Yeah. I personally am interested in those things, but, um, yeah. And so I try to interact with people like just net like as a human being um and I think it's just like you know I have a good relationship with some people and I've I've talked to other like makers who are a little bit bigger than I am about doing you know maybe like a giveaway together or something like that where we kind of like combine forces and expose each other to each other's circles Mm -hmm. um so that's kind of like the the toe that I've been dipping into the influencer marketing just because like I already have connection with those makers yes they're bigger than me um but as far as like people who I guess are like models um I don't really have strong connections with those people yet and I'm like intimidated by them because I'm like I don't want to like you know, come off as being like, I'm using them or anything, even though it's their job. Like that's literally how they make their livelihood. I still just feel like intimidated about it. Okay. So I'm going to help you with that. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So you're doing, so you're already doing some things right. And your gut, you are going with what your gut's telling you, which is a, 
work with community and work with influencers. So the contesting thing is great because, and they can be people who have more following than you, but to be perfectly honest, it, it's also not just about like, you can't think just about the stars of the world, you know? You can't think of the people who have like thousands and thousands of followers compared to you. What's nice about community and especially for small business owners, is that you probably know some great brands because you've been traveling the country doing these markets. You probably know people who maybe are, are like you, where they've had their business for a few years, they have solid communities. And while their Instagram following may only be 2,500 people, those 2,500 people are true loyal fans like yours. So in, in that instance, I think it's more about creating a giveaway or a contest or, you know, what, whatever it is together and not necessarily basing the people who are within it on how many followers they have. I think you do it with like the solid four other people that you really either like and love working with or people that have a very specific aesthetic that matches yours, or you do it on like a theme, right? Like summer. Or, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like, there's like so many national, like National Cho- Chocolate Chip Day apparently was like last week. And I was like, I did not know there was a National Chocolate Chip Day. There's so many national days. <laughs> Great. So find so a national cool. day that fits you because I know they're out there. Like, like it's out there. Maybe and then, something. yes, and like gather all of the products from your different friends and do a giveaway. But when doing these things, and this is the this is the key, you have to follow through, and they all have to follow through. So you do the giveaway, you you know you shoot all the products together, you all talk about it, and everyone has to agree. Like we're going to talk about the contest three times, three hard posts, and also three stories within a two week period. And every time we do that, we're going to tag each other. Because often what I find happens when small business owners, like they take the time to create these contests and then like only two of the six people post about it. And Mm -hmm. then they don't even mention the different, where the different prizes are from. They just tag a photo. Like people aren't thinking the way like a social media agency would think. (laughs) A social Mm -hmm. media agency or social media manager would have that contest ready every single participant in the contest would have to post on specific days and they would say everyone has to mention every single person in the caption plus tag the products in the photo. Like they have all those things down. So that's something that you should do when collaborating with your community. Make sure to do that. Otherwise it's like, what's the point? You want them to mention you so that start following you. Um, and then influencers, let's dive into influencers. <laughs> it's funny that um, I'm just like, let's dive into influencers, but it's, you know, people who have following and really what I want to get across here is it's less about quantity. You know, it's really about quality. So the same thing, like that's why I started Unique Markets. I wanted people to start shopping and be conscious of what they were buying and realize like I can spend more money on this product that's made by this local artist than like buying it at Target, right? It's like I'm buying a quality product. And so with influencers, a lot of people have stars in their eyes and they think I have to go after the people that have like 200,000 followers. Like those people don't care about most other people. (laughs) You know, it's going to be hard to reach those people. I like to I really like to target and talk about micro influencers because I think people that have, you know, 15,000, 20,000 followers um, have a much better, sometimes loyal, natural, authentic reach with their audience. And so when you start to figure out what it is, you know, I'm assuming that the way that you'd want to work with them is by providing them product Mm -hmm. and then having them photograph it and, you know, post about it and talk about it. So the first thing you want to do when working with influencers is you want to create an Excel sheet. And I know this makes it so boring. It's (laughs) not fun. No, that's okay. I love Excel. I love Excel spreadsheets. Oh, amazing. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) It 
we're a rare breed, creative people who actually also like Excel. It's very rare. <laughs> I, I like them because it's out of character for me. Like <laughs> I have always, you know, seen myself as this disorganized, chaotic, creative person, but I'm not like that really. Like that's just a fantasy. I actually <laughs> like that's true, the real me. Yeah, that's great. So great. You already love Excel. Um, so you're going to start an Excel sheet and you're going to have like your, your goals. And so what are your goals? Like, do you want to increase followers? Do you, are your goals that you want to increase sales? Cause those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to increase traffic to your website? So come up and they, you could want all three of those things. Right. But the way that you're going to work with each influencer is different based on the goal. So if you want to increase traffic to your website, then it's one thing and you're going to have them all mention, you know, peachbeast.com. If you want to increase sales specifically, then you're probably going to have them, if they have the, the shopping functionality, you know, you want to drive traffic directly to your shop or even a specific product if they're talking about a specific product. And then if you want people to follow you, then it's about this, you know, it's about like, my God, look at this amazing artist um, who creates these great patches, um, follow her at. So it's like, it's a very specific ask. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing you need to figure out your goals. Then you need to come up with your wish list of influencers. And this is where some of the hard work comes in because you are going to thoroughly stalk people. Um, <laughs> and like stalk in a positive way, not in like a scary, creepy way. You're really, what you're doing is you're putting time and energy into researching, right? And so you want to just start researching other artists that you like, other brands, um, start to see if any of them work with influencers or have, because then you know that those people are open to working with small brands. So kind of check that first. Second, start to just look for like you probably know the bloggers that you like or some of the influencers that you already like. So start to add those people to the list. And then the other thing that you can do, and this seems weird, but um, you can search hashtags. And I say this because you have a very specific aesthetic. And so mm -hmm. there may be hashtags out there that you know of or that you use a lot in conjunction to your product. Um, also, like I know, you, you know, pins and patches is a big that's like a big genre and people say those two things together a lot, like pins and patches. So like I would search some of the hashtags that belong to that community because then you may start to find people like, oh, wow, this person is in Chicago and they have 11,000 followers and they're obsessed with patches. Great. I make patches. Like you want to find these types of influencers is the random actress or model or celebrity going to be like great for your brand? Yes, of course. But the likelihood that you're going to connect with people who are already interested in illustration and design, patches, jewelry, just being a fucking badass. Like there are certain things that you are already looking for. And so I would go with those people first. So you've got this Excel chart, you've got your goals, you've got people that you're going to contact and try to convince to work with you. And this is where a lot of people then get intimidated because they're like, should I say that I can pay them? Should I uh, just send them product? I don't know. My product, the total is going to be like $20. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Like people, small business owners get really intimidated with this specific part. But I truly believe that it's about numbers. This is a numbers game at this point you have a great story, you have a great aesthetic and you make great products. So people are going to like them or not, right? Like you've already done your homework by finding influencers that you think are going to like your product. So the likelihood that they're going to say yes is already better than you just like cold calling a model on Instagram who has 500,000 followers, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, you need to figure out what it is that you're going to give them or offer them. And then hopefully they're going to say yes, but usually in the email. And so this also is where some strategy comes in. You can either DM them 
because a lot of people get DMs and they answer them. Like it's, they're in the app already, right? You're already in Instagram or you can send an email and it's up to you, which you, which you want to do. But for me, a lot of the time when I get approached on DM, it's kind of like, uh, okay, email me. And then I give my email address. Yeah. I prefer when I get the asks over email because usually the person like lays it out more and it also feels more professional. Mm-hmm. Me. So I would suggest um, sending an email. And usually the this is what is in an email. It's usually just like a short, quick introduction to yourself and your brand. And when I say short and quick, I mean like two sentences, if that, maybe one sentence about you and your brand. Um, find something to connect with the person on. So if it's another woman, then you need to capitalize on the fact that like, you know, like you, I am a female business owner or like you, I'm an illustrator based in Milwaukee. Like you need to come up with something that like a commonality that connects the two of you. Mm -hmm. That's usually good. And then you get into the ask. And this is really important because people like, tiptoe around and it's like, don't tiptoe around. These people get these emails all day, every day. Mm-hmm. They just need to know what you want from them and what they are going to be expected to do. And so that's where most small independent business owners fail miserably. I get these emails that are like, it's like a, a letter of their life. It's <laughs> eight paragraphs. And then v- at the very, very end, it's like, I'd really love to send you some jewelry and have you wear it. Like, that's it. And I'm like, wait, they just (laughs) literally told me a sob story about everything. And then finally, it's just like, I'd love to send you some jewelry and wear it. And it's like, that's not specific enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the, like, what's the jewelry that you're sending me? Is there a value to it? Do you need me to post or are you just sending it to me to check out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think for you as a small independent brand, I love your story and that's what you really need to lead with and then find a commonality. And then it's like, I'm looking to grow, you know, as a, as an independent artist, I'm looking to grow my Instagram following and reach new people, you know, like you can be honest. And I think there's something great in honesty and authentic, like it's not being vulnerable, but it's actually just showing what it is that you want, right? So it's like, I'm looking to grow my Instagram following or like, I really love your Instagram account and the X, Y, or Z that you do, you know, whatever it is, I would love to share my products with you and potentially have you share with your followers. Like if you're interested, you know, email me, you can do it kind of like that, which sets it up. Or you can very specifically say, you know, I'm trying to do this as an independent artist. I don't have any budget, but I'd love to send you anything that you want from my website. Like if there is something that brings you joy that you see that you like on my website, I'd love to send you that thing. And I'd also love to send you that same thing to give away to your audience, you know? Yeah. And then if, if that person writes you back, then at that point, you need to say, and This is really important. You really need to say like, great, I'll send this, da, da, da. In exchange for me sending, like, can you do one hard post and make sure to like tag me, add this, here's a hashtag. Like you need to be specific and not feel bad about doing that because that's where most people, like they just send the product and then they wonder, they're like, it's off in the universe and then the person never posts about them They never mention them on stories. And it's like, maybe the person didn't like the product and that's totally fine. Yeah. In that case, you need to follow up and be like, hey, just curious if, you know, if you liked it or not. But most people, most business owners don't know to ask for what they want from the influencer. And that's the big problem. So then the influencer just doesn't know and they get sent so much stuff like, you know, it's not their job to know exactly what you need from it. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure to do that. Yeah. I, I really like the idea too, of letting them pick what they want because I want them to be excited about it too. I don't want it to just be like, 
hey, this is what I'm trying to promote. Like, I want them to genuinely like the thing and be like excited about wearing it and having it and wear it all the time, you know? Yes. So I guess that's one thing that I didn't really think of. Like, I mean, I felt like asking someone, like sending them an email that was like, hey, I'm looking to, you know, increase my reach. I love your style. I think our brands align. You know, would you be open to a collaboration or a giveaway or whatever? And then telling them like, you have to go through my website though and pick, but then they're getting something though. It's like shopping for free for them. Yes. Yes. You know? So I guess the idea of a trade, I mean, I do trades all the time. Like I'm very open to trades, but, and not everybody is too. So I don't want to be like, you know, it just feels like you're asking for something for nothing, but you're not, it, that's not the case. <laughs> right. No, someone could go to your website and look at the clothing section and be like, oh my God, I love this specific rainbow dagger tee, right? But if you send them jewelry, they might not be as excited. And Mm -hmm. this is something that I, as a so-called influencer, hate. I get sent so much stuff. Daniel knows this. (laughs) I get sent the most random stuff. And it, it actually, it not only sucks for the brand, but like it, I feel guilty about it because it's like there's so much stuff in the world that's produced Mm -hmm. and I get sent stuff that I don't like and I'll never use. And then I feel guilty because then I'm, I'm stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So at that point I'm like, does anyone want this? Like, then I have to like try, like, I don't want to just throw it out. And it, it actually creates this anxiety (laughs) for me. And so I love when brands or artists approach me in an email and they're just like, Hey, I love what you do so much. You know, like I love listening to your podcast or I've been going to unique markets for years and I just love what you do. I finally came up with my own line of candles. And like, instead of assuming they know what I would like and sending me candles, they're like, I would love for you to pick out three scents, which is great Mm because I love masculine scents. And like, everyone sends me like the floral girly scents. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to use that candle. Like (laughs) I'm allergic to lavender, but you didn't know that because you didn't ask me. So I think that the way that you do it is you, you know, you send them obviously a link in that email. Here's a link to my website. Feel free to choose anything that you like, or you could even go as far as saying, I would love to give you a $100 credit, choose whatever you'd like. And in exchange for that, I'd love for you to do like, you know, a hard post at some point in the next 30 days. Like, you know, because also some, some people who really do this for a living or um, have content calendars, like a lot of people already have like weeks already set of their posts. So don't expect like immediate results to just be realistic and say, you know, like I'd love, does it seem realistic that you post in the next 30 days? If so, that would be awesome. Let me know and I'll send you the code for the free hundred dollars. That to me is so awesome also because not only can the person find stuff for themselves, but if they're like a nice giving human being, they might also say like, oh my God, my younger sister would love these earrings so much. And then you're kind of getting a two for one because that person is then giving your product to someone else who may talk about it too. That's true. Yeah. If they do it as a gift or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, So yeah. So that's really, I mean, the influencer thing is great. It's frustrating because you are going to have to send out, it is a numbers game. You're going to have to send out a lot of these emails, but just know that it's well worth your time because, you know, for every 10 emails that you send, maybe five say yes. And so you're just trying to hit those numbers and, you know, you kind of, you should write a template for the email and then just kind of make each email specific and unique to each person. But if you're working with a template, then it's not as time consuming and not as hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I find that, um, super helpful. Um, yeah. I think it's just like, we, you know, we just assume that influencers are like cooler than us or holier than thou or something, (laughs) but they're actually just human beings. Um, and I think that's the, the cool thing about like being a small maker too, is that at least for my, you know, myself, I think I show a lot of my personality and like who I am as a person, 
through my social media and like through my work. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's like what makes influencers special too, is they're honest about like what they believe in, who they are, you know, they're allowed to have opinions. They're not a corporation. Like that's the whole thing. So, yeah. Um, I think yeah, so it's exciting. I, to try, yeah. Try if it. you find the, you know, what's also interesting, I just realized we're on your Instagram right now. Everyone watching the video on YouTube can see this and it shows me suggested people. And I'm curious how the algorithm on Instagram figured out who those suggested people were, because if there's something that already is connecting them to your account, it, it might mean that they're that much more apt. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I have a feeling yeah. these people are all chosen for a reason. So it's mm -hmm. like, wow, it could be that you guys have shared hashtags. And then that means they're that much closer um, to your style, which is really interesting. So I'm surfing your Instagram account right now. It's very colorful. Your work is very colorful. I love it. Mm -hmm. Very graphic and colorful. So as I'm scrolling this, um, I'm doing this just so that the YouTube audience can see the aesthetic of your work, which I think is so fun. So there are, um, what are some of your favorite designs and can you describe them to the audience? Yeah. Um, I think the jewelry, the earrings, I have a lot of new earrings that were all new designs this year. Um, and I worked on them for, you know, a few months. And then of course they were released like after the, the lockdown thing happened. <laughs> so, you know, cause I was getting ready for the springtime and doing fairs and stuff. So I was like, okay, I want to have a whole new line of jewelry. Yeah. Um, so my earrings for the most part are acrylic laser cut. And then uh, some of them are hand painted and then resined. Yeah. Um, so they're all kind of, you know, unique in that way. Um, and then some of them, like the little joints or the little flames or the, the cool S's, like those are all hand painted on top of the laser cut acrylic. Um, oh, wow. Okay. And I like them because they're statement pieces, like they're large, but they're not heavy. They're very comfortable. They're lightweight. Um, and yeah, I started laser cutting last year only. So I've only been doing it for maybe a full year, not even a full year possibly. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think being an illustrator, I'm just so familiar with vector work. So being able to adapt that into jewelry um, has been really fun. Yeah. Where well, I'm showing everyone the photo right now of the pink acrylic earrings. And so those have also been hand painted. I'm assuming the black, the outline yeah. or, the, or the eights. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the cool S or the pointy S. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I did a little like alliteration poem <laughs> for that. Yes, I um, love it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's funny, like those earrings too, whenever I did have, you know, them at fairs, like people would always have a story because those are like the iconic S that we all like drew in our notebooks or like on the bathroom stall in middle school or whatever. Um and then I would have like school teachers come up to me and be like, yeah, my students still draw this. Like it's still. That's so interesting. On, so. <laughs> well, I love your work and I feel like it's, it'll be so easy for you to find the influencers to work with and to start doing it. You just have to get that, that email ready mm -hmm. and then just start sending it off because I, it's such a specific fun viewpoint and I think a lot of people will connect with this. So I just want to make sure that you are getting out there. That That's yeah. what it is. It's the hard work of actually sending those emails. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I definitely feel a little bit less intimidated now. So yeah. And then to go back to the Excel sheet, the very sexy Excel sheet, um, <laughs> The other thing that you should keep tabs on, of course, is like the actual results. And so this Excel sheet will not only help set you up for success because you're coming up with your goals, the asks that you're going to do for people, the actual influencers, but you're also going to keep track of like who you've actually contacted mm -hmm. and like when, and then like if you've heard back from them or like, you know, is it time for a check-in? Like, okay, I sent the email. I haven't heard anything for a week. Maybe you send them like a follow-up email. And then if you don't hear back after that, you're like, okay, I get it. They're not interested. But keeping track of those things and using data to help you is going to be 
great because then you'll know, oh, no, I reached out to those people like already, you know, they never responded or this person did respond. And now I have to remind myself that in three weeks from now, like they should have posted. It just helps you um, analyze the work, the time that you're putting into all of this. Yeah. I think too, like, that's one thing that I've, you know, not been the best about keeping track of is like concrete results, like knowing did this work or not? Or like, you know, what's your, cause it's hard to like, say like, okay, yeah, I want to expand my reach, but like, what does that mean? I mean, how many influencers are you going to reach out to? What's your goal? You know, yeah. what's your goal increase number? Like things like that. Like, I feel like the goals are sometimes very ambiguous and they need to be a little bit more concrete for at least me to like see yeah. like, okay, yeah, this is working. So no, they, they need to be concrete like yeah. 100%. And that's what too many small entrepreneurs and makers do not think about, which is like, like you're lucky because you clearly have both left and right brain, which is also something that I have. Like I was an artist, I guess I still am, except that I'm a business person now, <laughs> but it's like, I love Excel and I love analytics. And I love, when I send a newsletter, I love to look a day later to see like, what are the analytics? Who's clicking? Were they on their phone or were they on a desktop? Like I nerd out over those things. And a lot of creatives don't have that interest in that side of things. So it's really good that you are already thinking about like ROI and return on investment and like specific. So right now I can see you're at 16, you're basically at almost 1700 followers. Mm -hmm. So if I were you, I would say like, okay, my goal is every month to increase my followers by 250 people. And if you break or 300 people, which is one person a day, I just need to get one more follower per day. And Mm -hmm. so then you think 300 times however many months are left in the year. And then you say, okay, so by the time 2021 hits, I should have increased my followers. I should be at this number. I'm not great at math, so I can't figure out what that number is in my head. But if we have six months, then maybe you can increase by 1,800 followers, which would mean you double your following by right. 2021. And I, that is not far off. Like that's a realistic number, one follower a day. If you break it down like that, then it's like, yeah, you could double your following. That's without influencers. That's just trying to think about like, you know, posting more regularly, um, Mm -hmm. getting people on your website to push back onto your Instagram. Um, When you fulfill orders, do you have anything in there that pushes them to follow you on Instagram or subscribe to your newsletter? I have, I mean, I always send out business cards. I have my Instagram handle on there. Okay. Um, And I'm starting to do uh, custom stamps on all my clothes that have my Instagram handle on them too. Oh, great. Um, Very smart. Yeah. I thought about, I have like little tags, little heart shaped, like clothing tags. And I thought about putting something on there, like a hashtag or something that says like tag me when you wear this or something like that, just to kind of like encourage interaction. Yeah. Um, A lot of people have been posting more, you know, and tagging me. I feel like since we've been living our lives virtually, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, but I think like calling people to act like in some way is really might be more helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you, cause people can get a business card and that's great, but it's like, it's a business card, right? Mm -hmm. It's better to get a card that says like, follow me at whatever Mm -hmm. for a daily, you know, for smiles or for like, you could do whatever you want or just like, you know, come up with something that seems crazy, even just a beautiful card with one of your, one of your illustrations on it that says, you know, like, follow me, like support me by following me on Instagram. Like as soon as people make that connection and and hear like, oh, right. Support me by following her. Like things like that make sense to people as opposed to just seeing like the at and your name Mm -hmm. because they see that all the time. Yeah, that's true. What's funny too, is like, I can see from my Shopify that like, I can't remember the percentage, but it's like, something like 80% of my sales are from Instagram. Wow. That's, so it's like, so that's they're like clicking your link. Yeah. That's like my main source of marketing right now, basically. Which is super interesting because you only see, this is the, this is what shows quality over quantity. You only have 1700 followers yet. 
that's the main driver for your sales. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. Yeah. 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 All of the time that you put into Instagram then is clearly a great return on investment. Like Mm -hmm. for sure. I'm excited to see like how you grow. And then also I'm excited for you to um, start working with influencers. Like start emailing the people and, and getting it out. And then we want to hear back from you and you'll be like, yes, I worked with this person or I did this and I've raised this many followers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep you updated or hopefully that you can see. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I think um, it's interesting too. Like when I think about the people that I picture wearing my clothes or my jewelry, it's like, you know, people that I just think are cool. Like, you know, so um, that's kind of fun. The fun part about like looking for influencers is like, wow, yeah, you're awesome. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. The other, the other thing that just came into my mind. I think I don't know how much time we have. I think we only have a couple more minutes. But the other thing that just came into my mind too is like all of those amazing women potentially that have that have talked to you at markets, who've been your neighbors selling, like the people who you have become friends with. That's the amazing thing about markets is that like people make genuine connections with one another, Mm -hmm. even though they're from all across the country. Yeah, for sure. You should be sending them stuff, right? Like, I mean, people, I love, I love talking about brands. When people send me stuff, I'm like, yes, of course, like I want to support your brand. So I'm going to talk about it because there's a connection that we've made and like by me celebrating you, it means like at some point I know you're going to celebrate me, you know, it's Mm -hmm. reciprocal. So even though you may not consider them to be influencers, like in the kind of dictionary version of what an influencer is, I think that you should also look to the community of other makers and sellers that you Mm -hmm. know and just send them earrings, send them a t-shirt, send them a sticker pack because they already know you and like you. And so I guarantee you, they will talk about you and um, post and do stories. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I did a lot of trades in person at shows Mm -hmm. just because that's like, I don't know. That's what people do. I feel like they like see something they're like, Ooh, I'm going to go shopping, but like trade shopping. But, Um, uh, but I will say this, it's so different in person. And I'm sure you're, now that you are, now that we're all at home and just like on our devices all the time, Mm -hmm. like when you're in person and you trade, you know, it's like you do it, people are exhausted. Maybe they talk about it when they get back to the hotel rooms. Maybe they don't. You sending stuff out to people is very specific because it's also like a treat in the mail, which we could all use right now. Yeah. So it's going to get you that extra bump and push and attention because no one's doing shows. So if you sent 20 people a little package with a few of your items in it, just to like, say, I hope that you're doing okay. They're going to mention it on Instagram. Like people will talk about it for sure. Yeah, that's true. And brighten their day a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. That's what it's about. (laughs) Um, well, it's been so good talking with you. I just love, I honestly just love your products and your, just your perspective so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to start just reaching out to people because I know they're going to they're going to respond. It's just you getting getting those requests mm-hmm. out there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of your advice and thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, of course. All right, thanks so much, Sonia. Hey, wait. Before you go, calling all small business owners, nonprofit pioneers and savvy side hustlers. If you're looking for the smarter way to market your idea, small business, or cause online, Constant Contact has your back. Whether you're just getting started and need a simple logo maker or easy way to build your website or online store, or if you're ready to step up your online marketing game with customizable email campaigns, social media, and search marketing tools, Constant Contact has everything you need to achieve online marketing success all in one place. Paired with practical advice from their award-winning team of marketing experts at every step of the way, Constant Contact helps you achieve real results fast. For an exclusive deal, visit Constant